Jesus says, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. How is that not massively discouraging that uh, every careless word we've ever uttered will have to give an account for on the judgment day? Um, give an account for I don't believe their means they become the ground of our acceptance with God I think other things that Jesus says especially to the publican who went down to his house justified because he just cried out for mercy he knew he had failed with his tongue 10,000 times and wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven and ask for mercy and Jesus said he's accepted so my understanding of justification by faith alone apart from the work of the tongue stands having said that I think the bottom falling out in discouragement won't happen. You can be discouraged up here at this level, but the bottom's not going to fall. You got your feet on the rock of the sovereign, free grace of God, purchased by one who never spoke amiss, and whose righteousness with his tongue will be counted as the righteousness of my tongue. So that's the that's the basis where we stand. Now you've got manifest in the New Testament judgment according to works. And according to is not the same as on the ground of as the foundation of your acceptance, but judgment according to. And we will be, I believe, uh, rewarded according to the good or bad that we've done with our tongues. And my understanding, along with Jonathan Edwards, of how that works is that the reward consists in our greater or lesser capacity to enjoy God and all the benefits of heaven. Everybody will be perfectly happy, but some will have bigger cups to fill than others. That's Edward's analogy. And so we'll all be perfectly happy and nobody will be living a life of eternal frustration in heaven because they were saved like the thief on the cross who will have to give an account for his tongue and all he ever did with his tongue except for the last half hour was sin and then he will give an account of that so my, my picture of, of the last day is that there will be tears at that moment of sorrow and regret and I think the Lord will look at me and I will just crumple in one sense because of how much I've let him down and so in that sense it is discouraging it's just not decisively, eternally, horribly, suicidally discouraging. Um, and there are passages, and one of my favorites is in Micah 7, where the prophet talks about, uh, when I fall, I will rise, and the Lord will execute judgment for me and not against me even though I am now under the darkness of his disapproval. And at that moment in the last day when, here's my, my picture, is that the, the filing cabinet for John Piper's life is pulled out. It's a 62 years worth, everything's written down. And uh, the folders will all have grades on them, you know, F, D, C plus, maybe here and there, a B minus. And, uh, and God will take everything that does not function as an evidence of my new birth and he'll pull it out and show it to me. I'll be grieved and need to throw it away. Cover it with the blood of Jesus and he'll take this little, little bundle that's left, <laughs> you know, like from B minus down to C minus, and he'll hold it up to the entire universe and say, this is proof positive he was born again. That's the way I understand the judgment according to works. 
And so since he's born again, he's united to my son, and my son never spoke anything amiss, and therefore all of John Piper's failures are, are covered here.